thank you very much. I prepared some slides, but I probably will skip most of them and just talk, but I, I maybe use some of them. Okay, <clears throat> so as uh, already uh, Kai explained, there is a this uh, the following kind of fundamental notion of convexity in complex geometry, which uh, we call J convexity, or of course, is classically called pseudo convexity. And this is a differential geometric notion. And it means, uh, like, for instance, uh, one of interpretations that uh, you take a hypersurface uh, uh, in a complex manifold, or say, for instance, in CN, and it is uh, uh, normal, mean normal curvature in any complex, complex direction, tangent complex direction is positive. So it's kind of like uh, what is the essence of this uh, property that it invariant under by holomorphism. So it's kind of much more in some sense uh, uh, invariant than, than the usual geometric convexity, which only invariant under a fine transformation. So then it was as a was started by so it was introduced by by Levy in the beginning of uh, 20th century. <clears throat> and it kind of was understood that it is related to, to many notion of uh, convexity in uh, like known convexity in complex, uh, complex geometry. And this is a, what is called polynomial rational and holomorphic convexity. So let me just briefly remind you. So, there is a, if you have a, for instance, uh, just let's restrict to the case of CN, you have a compact set, then you can define it polynomial hull. So you consider all kind of points which you can uh, uh, cannot separate from, uh, from this given compact set by modulus of complex polynomial. So then there is a, uh, you can also have a rational hull. Uh, this is the same just in, in terms of rational function. And uh, you can also define holomorphic hull and holomorphic co convex hull, but this is, uh, you need to, to, to say holomorphic hull in what? Because this uh, holomorphic function is not defined on the whole here. And then respectively, you have this notion of uh, polynomial convexity, rational convexity, and holomorphic convexity is uh, slightly kind of more tricky to define. So you say that open set, you, you define all first uh, that open set is holomorphically convex if for every compact subset, it's holomor for holomorphic hull of this compact subset in this open set is compact. And compact set is called holomorphically convex if it have a like fundamental system of holomorphically convex neighbor. So this is a really kind of like fundamental notion of in complex analysis. For instance, is equivalently they can be reformulated in terms of approximation property, in terms of approximation by polynomial, rational function, holomorphic, etc. And what is a uh, this kind of was a uh, discovery in vision vision of Levy is that uh, what, uh, what he, he proved that holomorphically convex domain is always pseudo-convex. There is a, some kind of nuances is strict pseudo-convexity or weak pseudo-convexity. It's a big deal in complex analysis and there is a kind of like things much kind of uh, like a lot of extremely deep question about this, but I'm kind of ignoring this as if it's not important. So mostly I just think uh, speak about strict convexity in, in this in this talk. And but sometimes I'm not so precise. Something's true for big pseudo convex, some uh, for strict. So the so Levy just proves that holomorphic convexity implies pseudo convexity, and he kind of conjectured that converse is true, and this was called Levy problem. And for domain in CN, it was settled by Oka. 
who proved that strictly pseudoconvex domain and CNS allomorphically convex, and then it required like many year development, including uh, people and kind of culminating can ground to, to upgrade it to weakly pseudoconvex domain and also to other manifold, but I'm uh, not, not kind of going into this direction. <clears throat> So there is also uh, kind of like characterization by, by Oka that pseudo-convex domain is a, uh, so, so how you characterize now polynomial convexity. So there is a theorem of Oka that, so if you have a domain, so if it's polynomially convex, it's kind of automatically pseudo-convex, it has a pseudo-convex boundary. And the condition that, it is a polynomially convex means that this uh, this pluris so it's a sublevel set of kind of like locally defined therefore pluris harmonic function but condition that it polynomially convex that this function extend to the whole cn and it doesn't matter how it extend to the whole cn because there is a construction of taking maximum of pluris harmonic function so whichever extension it it has, you can take a, some kind of function extremely fast growing in CM at infinity and therefore take a maximum and then uh, you can make your uh, plurisubharmonic function have a prescribed behavior at infinity, whatever. But, but your want. domain are bounded. What? Your domain are bounded domains or not? Yeah, yeah, domain are bounded. I can talk about, uh, okay. yes, yes. I can talk about compact domain, yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so the domain, of course, not so great. The domain, like I always think about bounded domain, compact domain. Okay, so, uh, so this is a, and then there is a much more recent characterization of rational convexity also in terms of this differential kind of geometric condition. It says that pseudo-convex domain is uh, rationally convex, even only if, you can find uh, just locally defined the uh, defined by locally this uh, pluris warming function and this form uh, corresponding form DDC uh, which kind of symplectic form on the uh, on this domain extend to the whole CN. You don't require functional extent, but you require the symplectic form extent as Keller form, which means that it com form compatible with uh, uh, standard complex structure. So that, that means that there exists uh, positive definite uh, Hermitian form for which this uh, form is imaginary part. So Yes, and so, okay, so I kind of, as, as, a, as I said that kind of like, I, I was be kind of switching back and forth, but we, with Sky, we prefer to use this notion of J, let's like term in J, J convexity instead of pluris of barmanicity and uh, to the convexity. Uh, just first of all, because like sometimes it's useful to change to change complex structure, and also you can talk about this in the non-integrable J context. But okay, but that is of course not important. Okay, so as already uh, Kai explained in in his talk, I think the really crucial crucial. Uh, uh, just one second. So the, the crucial kind of like issue here that all this uh, notion, that, okay, so essentially this is a geometric notion of pseudo-convexity or J-convexity is tightly related to some notion of convexity in simplectic and contact geometry. So what do we have in the, uh, in the in, in the case of of this uh, plurisubharmonic function? So you can, as we said, we already can take this 
form omega phi is minus DDC phi. So this is a symplectic form. So it's kind of already kind of first indication of some symplectic connection. Then you can take a gradi gradient of this function phi with respect to uh, this Hermitian metric, which is a like uh, real part corresponding to, to the Hermitian form. And then this vector field turns out to be Liouville field. So let, let's call it X phi. And this, this is a Liouville, Liouville field for omega phi. And Liouville field for omega phi just means that lead derivative of x phi uh, of omega phi along x phi is equal to uh, omega phi. So the, this field uh, is, uh, uh, so if you take a flow of, of this vector field, then it just rescale, rescale our symplectic form. So this is a, one thing. Then also, as a as a Kai uh, Kai already said, uh, Kai already said that when you take a, for instance, more uh, critical part uh, of, of subharmonic function, then its uh, uh, stable manifold is automatically uh, it have an index less than n, and a stable manifold of them are isotropic submanifolds, so kind of like in critical dimension, they are Lagrangian. And then it, it follows that uh, the whole, like for instance, if you have a, uh, this uh, pseudo-convex domain, then uh, you can, uh, yeah, so, uh, so level set automatically, uh, because you have this uh, transverse to them, uh, to level set transverse, uh, Liouville vector field, then that means that if you consider corresponding, so if you take a form, which is a, in, in this case, kind of you contract O x, x phi with omega phi, and of course you just get this minus dc phi form, then this form is a, it's a primitive, so this is a, uh, so this form lambda phi, and the this is a primitive form for omega phi. And uh, this form is contact on this submanifold. So, so, so the level set or pseudo-convex hypersurfaces are contact manifold. And what also follows that this uh, uh, minus flow of the gradient vector field ret retract the dom domain to, to its uh, more complex which is therefore some isotropic complex, some kind of singular Lagrangian, you can think about it. So maybe let me also say uh, here, uh, there is a, uh, in, in the case, in, in the case uh, of contact geometry, at some moment, moment we, we, we wrote with Misha some paper, called uh, convex symplectic manifold, like emphasizing this property. So, uh, and uh, essentially kind of what we are saying that this, if you have a hypersurface in, in symplectic manifold, that symplectic convexity means the existence of uh, transverse Liouville vector field, which is kind of, as I say, the, the same as a saying that this is a, like what is called contact type hypersurface, right? So, so this is a, um, and the way also introduce this notion in contact context. So, so the contact manifold is uh, um, kind of like, uh, okay, so the contact manifold uh, literally is manifold with non-integrable hyperplane distribution. So in, in this complex context, this uh, hypersurface together with field, pseudo-convex hypersurface together with field of complex tangent uh, hyperplane. But it's also can be always thought there is this construction of symplectization and which uh, give us symplectic manifold with R plus action and uh, our contact manifold is kind of like transverse slice of the symplectic manifold. And in some sense, 
any notion in contact geometry is just con can be reformulated in terms of the symplectic geometry, but just repeating this word as R plus invariant or equivalent. For instance, we can also take uh, in contact manifold, you can take this cones and ask when such cones are symplectically convex. So, so that means that when you have uh, this Liouville vector field, like again, invariant uh, or equivariant with respect to R plus action, and uh, uh, which is transverse to it. And in pure contact term, that means that this is a hypersurface in contact manifold, which is uh, admit transverse contact vector field. And uh, just again, okay, so I'll come to this notion later on because there was some interesting recent development concerning it. Okay. <clears throat> so, so you have this, this is the important kind of picture that you have a critical point and you have a stable manifold and suppose in critical dimension, this is some Lagrangian and there is a level set and this level set is a contact manifold and intersection of this level set with a stable manifold is a Legendrian sphere. So you have, so you get this uh, Morse handle body picture when you have this, uh, this uh, uh, where attaching sphere are Legendrian or in smaller dimension isotropic and uh, this uh, core of handles are Lagrangian disk or isotropic disk. And the essence of this kind of like my old theorem which uh, I mentioned is that that this uh, there is some kind of geometric shape which allows you to surround surround this uh, um, stable manifold by arbitrary close uh, by arbitrary close pseudoconvex hypersurfaces. So we have a kind of like better proof of, of this in our book with Klein. And so you, you see here. So the, as I said, uh, pseudoconvexity means that there exists uh, positive positive uh, uh, positive curvature mean curvature in complex direction. And because it's a uh, Lagrangian, it's kind of totally real. And in fact, that's only what is important here. It's totally real. And therefore, you have a, a lot of positive curvature for this small sphere. And here it can, of course, can have some negative curvature, but this all this negative curvature is compensated by this positive curvature. And I think this is a little bit similar to all this uh, positive scalar curvature construction of Grove and Lawson uh, that you can surround it. And But the most subtle point is here, because here, when you need to, to approximate, you get a lot of negative curvature. But turns out that kind of uh, this is a kind of some subtle uh, inequality you have to solve differential, but in, it turns out that you can kind of surround it in such a way that to keep uh, mean positive uh, curvature here. So that's how this theorem is proved. Together with some H principle in terms of, uh, uh, yeah. So so the whole thing, the whole this theorem says, okay, so there exists this uh, corresponding notion of like which uh, we call Weinstein manifold. And this Weinstein manifold is pure symplectic creature. And then you would like to reconstruct this Weinstein manifold into Stein manifold. And for this, you need to solve this uh, geometric uh, surrounding lemma. And, and that's what, how you prove it. But existence of, and, and, so this uh, reduction work in any dimension and equal to or, or greater completely relevant. But this, uh, there is a second step, how to construct the corresponding Weinstein manifold. And then that's where this all this rigidity in symplectic rigidity in dimension to appear and disappear in high dimension. 
Okay, so that's uh, essentially already said. Yeah. So so now now there is a the following kind of observation of Kai and myself uh, which we wrote that turns out that if we try to construct, for instance, rationally convex domain, then the difference is just the following: that in the <coughs> in the <coughs> <laughs> in the Stein case, the surrounding works if you attach totally real submanifold along Legendrian submanifold, and it's sufficient just to have a totally real. But if you want to get the result, you want to keep rational convexity, then this handle needs to be not just totally real, but Lagrangian. If you if you can build your uh, kind of already, for instance, have a uh, you you already build some rationally rationally convex domain, and you manage to you have uh, some Legendre and you manage to attach attach this uh, uh, disk uh, necessary as a Lagrangian disk, then. You you can do the same surrounding, and the same surrounding turns out to preserve preserve rational convexity, the possibility of extending this uh, Keller form to CN, uh, as I told. Yasha, Yasha, you did yes. not write Lagrangian in your in your proposition there. Yeah? If if W is rash, uh, if totally if rational. Ah, yeah, so this is a, yes, 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 this is Lagrangian. Yeah, thank you very much. So it's amazing that somebody did what I wrote. Okay, yes. Okay, so, 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 so what, what did, yes. So, so now, now, now the, the whole question, uh, how to, how to exploit this? So then come all this domain of H principles. So if we have a, if we have a uh, just, so, so suppose you, you just have a, for instance, domain, domain in, in CN and it has a homotopy type of half dimensional complex and you want to make it into uh, kind of Stein domain, into pseudo-convex domain. Then what, what, what you need, you just need to every disk realize as a totally real disk with Legendrian boundary. And then there is a kind of like uh, standard old Gromov's principle about like uh, some Legendrian submanifold, uh, some construction. And, and there is a, again, Gromov's principle about totally real submanifold, uh, in, totally real embedding. And using this, you can construct the Stein domain. But in order to construct this Lagrangian disk, this is extremely subtle because there is a, it, it's completely non true that, for instance, you have a, uh, say, you have plenty of examples that you have some Legendrian and you can attach totally real disk, but you, but Lagrangian disk with this Legendrian boundary does not exist. For instance, you take a Legendrian and not, and it ba always bound this Lagrangian disk in, uh, uh, but in C2, in R4, such Lagrangian disk does not exist because this would contradict so-called uh, Bennington inequality. But what turns out, and this is a, uh, again, uh, related to the theory of this loose Legendre knot. If Legendre knot is loose, then what we proved with uh, Murphy, then such uh, Lagrangian disk, then there is a kind of H principle for, for Lagrangian disk as well with, with this loose Legendre boundary. And therefore, uh, because in dimension beginning from six, you can kind of do this realization via this flexible construction with this Legendre attaching attaching uh, spheres, then you can uh, uh, also realize construction of rationally convex domain. 
and that's what we have, uh, yeah so so uh, okay so so the, the claim is that if if you, if there is a symplectic embedding of this domain then there is a rationally convex and what, what i said if w is flexible then the symplectic embedding is automatically exist and therefore that's what we proved with sky therefore you can in dimension in dimension uh, beginning from six there is no constraint on the realization of uh, like other topological constraint besides this uh, homotopy type of half dimension uh, to uh, to to construct rationally convex domain in dimension four there are plenty of other constraints so yeah I, I just want to skip all this very fast because i want to go to a completely different subject so maybe maybe let me kind of formulate this as a theorem and uh, what i already formulated formulated that number one that uh, in, in dimension greater than two you have a kind of h principle for construction rationally convex domain and Polynomial convexity, you see, there is a, the following obvious condition for polynomial convexity, namely, n dimension homology should be tri trivial, and also you can check this uh, torsion, and then minus one dimensional homology uh, should, should be trivial. And this is just because by this uh, um, characterization of OCA, polynomial convexity means that possibility of extent defining plurisubharmonic function to Rn. And that means that if it's already have a non-trivial n-dimensional homology, then just by attaching only n dimension handle of dimension of index no more than n, you cannot kill them. And so this is a kind of it's easy to show that this condition condition is uh, uh, necessary and what we prove that it's also sufficient. So uh, what is kind of like interesting about uh, this uh, notion, notion of polynomial convexity that it's strangely, there is a kind of enormous number of open problems in this area, which kind of sound a little bit, a little bit as a, um, uh, they, they sound, a little bit like uh, uh, sim corresponding symplectic problem, but kind of looks differently. For instance, suppose you have a ball, and there is a kind of like symplectic question which started from Misha, and then kind of it was a exploited a lot called symplectic packing. So you have some other balls, symplectic balls, and kind of you try to pack symplectic by symplectic embedding there. And there is a kind of uh, very similar question of polynomial convexity, by polynomial convexity of con configuration of balls. So for instance, if you have a, what you can prove that if you take a, if you take a two balls, that is very uh, not so trivial, but easy to prove that it is a uh, polynomially convex. To prove it for three balls, this is already already hard, but it's a kind of theorem of Kalin. And for n balls, it's completely an open question. And you can kind of ask how kind of like. You, you take a take a, for instance round ball and you want to put kind of many other balls inside when, when it is uh, so how many balls you can take there so they, they that's a polynomially convex okay <clears throat> so maybe 
Kyle already talked about flexible manifold. So maybe let me kind of, uh, I, I think I'll skip all this, what I wanted plan to talk about, about Legendre knots, about Legendre caps. I think uh, maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe I only mentioned one thing. Uh, that's uh, this kind of theorem. So in dimension two, so in dimension two, in, in dimension two, there are plenty of constraints. So for instance, uh, already uh, Kai uh, mentioned that like you can prove that like you take a S2 cross D2, this you cannot realize it as a as a as a Stein manifold, as a as a Stein domain. So this is a actually the and the proof is not trivial. It's kind of like uh, so to prove that S2 cross D2 cannot be realized at a um, uh, as a as a Stein domain, it's relatively easy. Uh, it kind of again follows from um, essentially kind of Gromov uh, theorem uh, corresponding about R four. Uh, but uh, like to prove that S two cross R two does not admit Stein structure requires hyperquitin theory. Otherwise, there is no other known proof. So, but. For, for rational convexity, also there are some kind of additional constraints. For instance, there is a work uh, of uh, Nimirovsky Ziegel who completely classified what are uh, disk bundle over two dimensional surfaces, which could be realized as rationally convex domain in C2. And so the answer is the following. So let, let's uh, uh, DO. Uh, chi e denotes that d2 bundle over oriental sort of Euler characteristic chi and normal Euler number e. And the same is non orientable case. And uh, the, this is uh, the full classification. So that's the, the old domain which can, can be embedded. And what is interesting that uh, in this list, there is a, exactly two domain which are not. Uh, which uh, can be realized. So most of the other domain can, which are not in this list, cannot be realized even as a pseudo-convex domain. But there are exactly two which can be realized uh, as a pseudo-convex domain, but cannot be realized uh, as a rationally convex domain. And this is a cotangent bundle of Klein bottle. And the, the other one is a tubular neighborhood of projective plane with one singular point, kind of called Whitney umbrella point. <coughs> so what I what else now switch? Uh, so how much time I have? I have uh, uh, about twenty five minutes or something like this. Um, yes, correctly. Okay, so I would like to speak the 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 all remaining time about contact convexity. So this contact convexity, there was some recent development about this by by Hong De Huang, and uh, uh, so and I was kind of like involved to try and understand what was going on, and I still not quite understand what was going on, but, but I think it's a pretty amazing story. So let me, so, so, so this, this will be like pure symplexic geometry or contact geometry. It probably has uh, some uh, meaning, uh, complex geometric meaning again. As I said, this can be this contact convexity can be interpreted as a symplectic convexity of cone and respect, respectively you can talk about pseudo convex cones. You can consider like since the end you have a conical domain and you want just to understand, understand what pseudo convexity means for them. So this uh, okay but I will not go into these relations but but instead instead I kind of like just concentrate on contact motion. So again Original definition is that domain is a uh, contact domain is convex, as we define with in the our paper with Gromov, that domain is convex. So you have a say 
contact manifold of dimension two n plus one, and in this contact manifold you have a some hypersurface two n dimensional, and this two n dimensional hypersurface is a convex if it admits transverse contact vector field. So that means the flow along this vector field preserve contact structure. So then this condition is in fact can be like slightly restated in, in the following that <coughs> you can always find contact form. So because it's a context uh, structure invariant, you can in fact find the mean field local along hypersurface or extendable to the whole space. So co contact uh, contact localized uh, to the hypersurface. Field. Contact vector field all always extendable because you can cut if every way extendable, and it's not the same as transversal to the structure. No, it's not transverse to there. Yes, it, it is. There is a of course there is a, what is called if you have a contact form there is a, what is called rib vector field which is transverse kind of orthogonal to uh -huh. contact structure, and then it is of course contact, but as you'll see, contact could be tangent to contact structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 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 this condition, this can condition that um, uh, that, that uh, invariant just means that there you can pick always contact form, which can be written as follows. It's just some um, function on the surface times like let, let's denote by t. This is a flow coordinate along this vector field, like transverse coordinate. And then lambda is again some so, so, some one form on sigma, and, and x is again point on sigma. So you can always write a contact form locally in this form. And there is a some set, uh, let's call it maybe uh, v inside sigma, which is zero of this f. And geometrically, it's precisely mean where where our Contact structure is tangent to to the d of dt direction to our contact vector field. So, and this uh, uh, f of course divide uh, this on, on two part. And what is uh, uh, kind of easy to check that the contact condition means that uh, uh, that uh, d f is not zero along 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 v. And which means that by implicit function theorem that that this v is always regular submanifold, and this regular submanifold. So that means and, and the space of transverse contact vector field, the 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 cont uh, is a convex space. So the the linear con convex linear combination of convex vector field and convex vector field. <coughs> so 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 therefore. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, you can know it's contractible space, and because it's always regular, that means that up to isotopy, up to isotopy, this V is kind of unique. This, it's called a Giroux call it dividing set. So there is a following object always on on any on uh, yeah, and and notice the in, another thing that uh, now you can away. On, on sigma minus v, you can just divide our form alpha by f, and then you get form dt plus lambda over f. And now contact condition for, for this one just means that d lambda over f, d lambda over f is symplectic form. So that means that dividing set split our hypersurface in two Liouville manifold, in two symplectic manifold with fixed symplectic form, with fixed uh, primitive. And if you look at the <coughs> at the vector field, you can take a vector field Z, uh, which is kind of dual dual to this uh, lambda lambda a, to, to, to this form lambda over f with respect to the, sorry, you 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 take anyway. You take a dual with respect to the symplectic form uh, 
vector field dual to lambda over f, then uh, turns out it says you get this Liouville vector field, and what you get that this you can check that this vector field automatically automatically uh, that belongs to what is called characteristic foliation on any on any hypersurface in contact manifold. There exists uh, one dimension of foliation with singularity. And you know, you I think you more familiar that you have a hypersurface in symplectic manifold, then it has this kind of Hamiltonian flow along this. You can think about this as a level set of Hamiltonian, and therefore there is some one dimensional foliation, uh, which is uh, like kernel of symplectic form this hypersurface. But in terms of my conical interpretation, uh, if you take a any hypersurface and contact manifold and ca consider characteristic foliation there, then this characteristic foliation is also like invariant with respect to scaling. And therefore, it projects to one dimensional foliation on contact manifold. This singularity, a singularity correspond to completely vertical fiber. To the, and therefore, you have a, some singular foliation which is a kind of called characteristic relation. And it turns out that this characteristic relation is precisely directed by the real field of this. And this uh, dividing set, dividing set turns out to be transverse to characteristic relation. So in other words, we get the following picture. So, uh, so, so we get, the our corner hypersurface has this dividing set, which is a co-dimension two context of manifold, and it split uh, the sigma into part one I call sigma plus sigma minus, which are Liouville domain with this con contact boundary. So you have a two kind of like in what we called in previous sense, like the pseudo-convex domain in complex case, so we have this two line, two, two, two Liouville domain with pseudo-convex boundary, and the boundary has the same contact structure. So they do not fit to, to symplectic manifolds. They kind of like, they should be thought that they kind of come, come to this boundary from the same side. Yes, it's any that. contact, any convex hypersurface. Any convex, any, yeah. Any any convex hypersurface and contact manifold give you this. Yeah. So it's inherent in non-homogeneous. Read the special hypersurface. What you say? So it's inherent in non-homogeneous. There is a distinguished hypersurface. Why distinguished hypersurface? No, we say read this hypersurface. It's not unique or what? Ah, this is V. V, v is unique up to isotope. So there is a characteristic relation, and you can kind of move uh, this, uh, by isotopic transverse to this relation, but no more. But yes. it gives you some asymmetry. So it's some, some fundamental asymmetric concept of this convexity. Why asymmetric? What Why? Because it's, you know, just because it is some direction, it's not just. It looks a little so you cannot be homogeneous, right? And the same. Not, so mm. there, it, it cannot have contact group acting t -t -t transitively on this hypersurface. So it's different, have... contactly different from point to point, or what? No, no but, but of course, of course, uh, yeah, yeah, sir. Can you have a contact? So it's looks a little bit paradoxical, right? Usually convexity is everywhere the same. There is no preferred direction, preferred nothing. And here there is some preferred something. No, right. but I think... Uh, it's very still, bizarre, right? So yeah, no, but, no, but, uh, uh, it's very counterintuitive, yes? Yeah? Okay, well, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Well, let me go a little bit further, but I can, like maybe like partially will, will answer what you, what you want. Okay, so, so what? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> let, let, let's consider consider example of this. So, so, so essentially, like, and, and converse is in fact also true. If you take a, if you take a, any two Liouville domain with the same, with the same uh, contact boundary, you take a two Liouville domain, for instance, the same Liouville domain and double it, or any two other three different Liouville domain with the same contact boundary. And then you glue them together and then you can always find canonically contact structure on the neighborhood for which this is a convex hypersurface. <clears throat> so Liouville domain sometimes are Weinstein domain. So in particular, have homotopy type of half dimensional things. And in this case, I will say that this is a Weinstein convex. And in fact, in this case, uh, this uh, convexity can be characterized Weinstein convexity in the following intrinsic way. You can say that this hypersurface is a Weinstein convex if characteristic foliation can be directed by vector field, which is gradient like for some function. You can find, find some function, which is Riponov function, which is kind of such that characteristic relation is transverse to its levels. And plus one extra condition, uh, there is a, uh, this critical point, they are of two types. There are positive point where orientation of contact plane, canonical orientation coincide with the uh, orientation of uh, uh, hypersurface and uh, negative and you and uh, like you want to if you arrange this characteristic relation such that say uh, positive point of minimum uh, correspond to minimum then uh, some positive point minimum then you not allow kind of like what Giroux called retrograde connection uh, gradient tra uh, trajectory gradient trajectory connecting positive point with uh, like in, in the wrong direction with negative direction this negative point. So, okay, so like prototypical example, prototypical example, you take a round sphere in R3 and the characteristic relation kind of look like this. And of course it admits this kind of height function as a, uh, our uh, Lipunov function. And of course it admits kind of standard transverse contact vector field. But for instance, if you take a, if you take a, Torus, if you take a torus with say contact structure dz plus r square d phi, and take some torus of radius r, then this torus is kind of opposite to convex. So characteristic foliation is, uh, uh, is just spiral, and it's uh, pretty obvious that you cannot find any dividing set here. You cannot find any, anything which would divide it into two halves kind of like, but there exists the following kind of interesting observation. So let's take this torus and characteristic foliation is given by some monodromy, some diffeomorphism of circle. And this is a, in this particular example, this is a diffeomorphism as rotation. But suppose I slightly perturb I, I slightly perturb uh, this my my diffeomorphism. So instead of being kind of uh, uh, rotation, this is a graph of kind of my diffeomorphism. I perturb it so it has a like uh, finitely many non-degenerate periodic orbit. So so the characteristic relations then becoming like this. So you get a, some orbit which are uh, attracting orbit and some orbit, some repelling orbit. You get that, this general picture. And then in this case, it becoming immediately convex because this dividing set we can choose, you can take for instance, attracting orbit and surround them. And so- Well, well who is uh, convex, Yasha? It's structure convex or hypersurface convex? Hypersurface convex. There's two dimensional torus. There's two dimensional torus was not convex, uh, I see. But, now, 
But now this, this torus mm -hmm. after slight perturbation, when the characteristic foliation becoming kind of uh, general type, like no, no, not uh, have a, a kind of generic uh, in, a, in the sense that it has a rational rotation number with isolated zeros, then, uh, then you can, okay. So, and, and the theorem of Giroux, which he proved in, in uh, that any two dimensional surface by C infinity perturbation becoming convex. This is the example of it. So, question what kind of, what is the convexity in high dimension? What is kind of like go beyond dimension three? So, it is absolutely kind of like was uh, up to this work of Hon de Huang, essentially nothing knows. Pretty easy to prove that by C, you can have example by C infinity perturbation, you cannot make it convex. And even by C1 deformation, you can make it, you cannot make it convex. And what Hon de Huang proved that any hypersurface any hypersurface in contact manifold, any hypersurface in a contact manifold. Any meaning closed. Any closed, yes, any closed, yeah. any closed, maybe co-orientable. Orientable, okay. Co-orientable hypersurface, any closed co-orientable hypersurface uh, can be can be made can be can be made contactly convex and even Weinstein convex kind of in stronger sense. Weinstein convex by a C0 isotopy. So you can C0 approximated by convex domain. So let me kind of tell you that this is a kind of like absolutely fantastic uh, claim. Let's say let me so let me just see. So in particular, this is a corollary. Take any, take any four manifold. Take any four manifold M or signal still. Take any four manifold M. Then it can be it can be presented it can be presented as a union as a sigma equal sigma plus u sigma minus where where uh, sig uh, sigma pl plus minus are like Stein domain, if you wish, or Weinstein domain, Stein domain with the same contact boundary. With the same contact boundary. How much you limit this limit the cell decomposition? So I think just two do two dual the decomposition. It's not possible for, 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 for arbitrary decomposition. You take a Morse function and divides in two points be, be, be less than more than one, one half, right? So it always decompose manifold into such things, which but which is Stein, right? But you cannot yes, make the convex. Yes, but but you, you see, like in dimension four, especially in, in dimension four, it's extremely difficult to it's not true that any like like uh, two-dimensional homotopy type something is a Stein domain. Like for instance, uh, S2 cross D2 ah, is Stein see. domain. And moreover, you want them to make them Stein domain with the same contact boundary. Yeah, yeah I understand. There, yeah. Is a, there, there is a following kind of phenomenon. So, so there is this contact boundary, and there is a, some kind of like rigidity that usually, usually, first of all, not every context three manifold admits like Stein feeling, symplectic feeling. And if it's admits symplectic feeling, it's kind of usually pretty unique. So it's kind of not a, mm -hmm. not a, no, not kind of many such things exist. Of course, for high dimensions probably softer. 
Away what? from dimension four. Four is certainly very special. What, what about next dimension? Yeah, 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 I'll go to next, but let, let me first finish this four. Yeah. But 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 so 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 in particular in in particular but but kind of important that it's true in four. So it kind of complete each principle which does not know anything special about dimension four. Okay, and and so 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 in particular what 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 follow, follows that like you take a, a and moreover you can pre, what follows from this that this decomposition as a kind of like as many such decomposition as different context structure at least. So in many cases, there is an infinite many of such decomposition. And so, so in particular, like you take a S4. So of course, you can present S4 as a union of two balls. This is it. But can you invent any other? And from this theorem, there exists, it follows, there exists, it's three, I think infinite many, but at least three more I can prove. That uh, exist, and but I don't know any single example of this. So how to do this? I, because it's a you, you need to find contact manifold with two different feelings, and the following amazing property when then glue them together, the two different feelings they give you as four. Okay, so but 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 now, but even kind of more surprising thing. So what we kind of we we, we, we ask my one choice. question, but this is a soft proof, right? This or is a completely it? soft proof. It's soft just proof. a H. It's as a complete. It's like like explain the type type of proof. Okay. And, and the, the so proof it's kind of we proof. twist it. We get, you create as much twisting to make it kind of as soft as you yeah, can. Then, yeah, it, then yeah, you cannot yeah. see anything. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. So can you estimate the number of cells? So this number of cells of might be very big. Is there a priori bound? Of number of each cells. Well, when you have the decomposition, you have number of cells because you have two stand manifold, they have number of cells. Homology of each half, yeah. Can you I, I think um, yeah, I, I, I cannot estimate, but kind of the, the more number, the more hard. Yes, I understand. To make, to make the composition of this four into extremely complicated Stein manifold, which give you it will give it completely even more incredible if you can do that. Okay, well, anyway. I understand. The more you do the the, the better approximation, the more you have. But just I, I want the house to be a toric. No, this, uh, anyway, the proof. I'll just tell you, tell you proof. In, well, of course, not proof, but kind of like uh, some. Ideal so this complexity uh, may be in interesting and variant by how much you can how complicated it should be. Yeah. So so okay. Yeah. So the proof kind of like the what they do is is what never work in simplexity geometry. Is something which kind of like in all other situation what people do that it's always fail, but extremely strangely it works so okay so we start with characteristic relation and what was a, here's the ZI idea and, and then i even say something even more strange but uh, so the start characteristic relation which kind of very complicated for instance you or maybe you start with characteristic relation for this one you take a say take a three crosses one with this kind of standard uh, cartesian relation, which is just the spiral of a Hopf vibration, and you want to you want to make it into convex. So what you do with all what always people in the dynamical system do, they install plugs. They put some kind of small cut, and now I want to have a, some C zero deformation of this small piece to create some critical point inside and to have this property that somehow I arrange that all trajectory are being attracted by some of this uh, critical point. And so what you arrange that uh, every trajectory, you create so many critical points that all trajectory are originate and end at some critical point, so none one escape. So again, I repeat that in symplectic geometry, usually when you do the sum, the trajectory always escape. But they, they manage that they not escape. And 
Therefore, then after that, it's already easy to construct uh, after some perturbations, small perturbations, C infinity uh, to construct the um, Lipunov function. Yes. But what is uh, even more amazing is what we proved that in fact in the construction, so so in, so we do this, and you get this kind of like so this decomposition, the dividing set kind of each construct kind of fantastically complicated. It's like almost piano curve on, on your on your manifold. But then what we what we proved that in fact what when you constructed it, you can take this all this critical point you created in pairs and you can cancel them without touching the dividing set. So that means that all this creation of critical point was completely unnecessary. What we did is just the following thing. We, we make the cut and we just reglue. We, we have a one very particular, you can write an explicit formula, contactomorphism of, of a transverse ball. And you just reglue your characteristic relation inside the ball using this contactomorphism, which is identity on the boundary. And you do it on many, many kind of small transverse balls. And after that, after that, you, you get convexity. In particular, in this case of S3 cross S1, again, the convex hypersurface, convex uh, decomposition is uh, again, uh, uh, some monodromy foliation is just given by mono, by contactomorph monodromy of contactomorphism of a three. So that means there is a, some kind of strange theory of convex contactomorphism of of a three, for instance. Some of those whose suspension give you convex surface. So in dimension one, this is a precisely diffeomorph with a circle. Generic diffeomorphism is rational rotation number. What this in dimension three, I have no idea. So I think my time expired. So sorry. Uh, I stop here.